With the growing superiority of Apple Silicon in the form of M1, 2, and 3, it's fair to say that Intel Macs are becoming less and less appealing. The first of the Apple Silicons, the M1 MacBook Air, currently goes for $500, sometimes less, which is an absolute steal for a machine capable of blitzing through some really complex workloads. For a lot of us, though, $500 is a lot of money. Is there anything cheaper that, maybe with a couple of upgrades, can come close to its performance and save us a few bucks? Well, this is a 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. It has a 4-core Intel i7, a decently powerful dedicated AMD GPU, 16GB of RAM, and a lot more going for it. We'll see how it performs versus the newer competition a little bit later. Every single day, I get comments which go something to the tune of, is a 2012 or a 2017 or a 2019 MacBook worth it right now for X hundred dollars, or whatever. The answer is almost invariably no. I ranked every Intel MacBook in the video on screen, and in a nutshell, I wouldn't recommend wasting your money on them right now. The 2015 line of MacBook Pros are probably the last Intel MacBooks worth buying, especially right now. Let's go back to that 2015-15 inch actually. Its performance is relatively snappy despite the almost 9 year age of the machine. The computer in front of us has an i7 with a clock speed of 2.5 to 3.7 GHz, with an L3 cache of 6 MB. A big reason the computer has such bite in the CPU department though is because of its 4 cores. Geekbench 6, a CPU benchmarking tool, gives us a clearer picture of this. In the single core benchmark, the top spec 2015 Pro is above this 2017, and even getting close to one of the 2019 iMacs. It scores 1,158 compared to 2,335 on the MacBook Air. Yes, that's a considerable margin, but remember, 2015 15-inch machines can be had for half the price if you snag yourself a good deal. In the multi-core test, the 2015 rubs shoulders with 2018, 19, and 20 quad-core 13-inch Pros, while beating some 2016 and 17 15-inches by a distance. The 2015 score here is 3,824 compared to 8,313 on the MacBook M1 Air. Again, a sizable gap. So why buy the 2015 over an M1? Well, the elephant in the room is price. That's boring though. The 2015 is cheaper. Right now, let's talk about the other benefits. Our 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro has two USB 3 Type-A ports. The vast majority of accessories connect via USB-A, and USB 3 speeds are reasonable, meaning external drives are worth considering. The 2015 also has a full-size HDMI port, and two Thunderbolt 2 ports which double as native mini display ports. For both external storage and extra displays, we're looking good then. Actually, the 2020 M1 Air supports just one external display, while our 2015 can handle two, so looking great. The cherry on top here is the SD card slot. Really nice touch, since the newest MacBook Pros have these still. Being able to use an SD card on your laptop makes photography and video production stuff a lot more streamlined. Oh, by the way, which Intel MacBook are you daily driving to get your workload done at the moment? I'd really like to know what my subscribers are up to, so I've set up a Discord server where we can discuss Macs, old and new, repairs and upgrades. The link's in the description to join. MagSafe 2 is also included in the 2015's port selection. Charging via MagSafe is great. Yank the cable by mistake and you're fine because it'll just disconnect the magnetic cord safely. As you probably know, Apple brought this back in newer MacBooks too, and of course sold it as though it were an entirely new feature. The 2015 MacBook Pro was the first MacBook I thought the speakers sounded truly impressive on. It's one of those things where you have to try it to know what I'm talking about, but it's as though the sound is coming from a much larger space, quite perplexing for the ears. The screen is every bit as impressive. 2880 by 1800 is a really good resolution at 15 inches. 300 nits is actually 40% dimmer than the MacBook Pros of the 2020s though, so although it wasn't a problem for me, you might want to keep that in mind if you're going to be working outdoors. I'm always a fan of bigger screens on laptops. Normally the extra screen size presents an issue in making the laptop heavier on the whole, but MacBook Pros like the 2015 from the Retina family don't struggle with this. The 2015 15-inch is 200 grams lighter than the 2023 16-inch, despite being wider and thicker. It's absolutely viable for carrying around in a backpack all day. 
At 1.8 centimeters thick, or 0.71 inches, it looks truly modern. Perhaps the only thing giving away the age of this laptop is the glowing Apple logo on the back. Apple hasn't released a computer sporting one of those in seven years now. Outdated as it may seem though, the glowing logo is just… cool. Yeah, it's free advertising, especially in a dark room, but would you prefer a huge silvery grey looking Apple logo or a huge pearly white one which glows? Right, let's break down some important internal parts on the 15 inch 2015 MacBook Pro. These machines came with 16GB of DDR3 laptop memory by default, running at 1600MHz. 16GB was the only available option, but it's safe to say that's a good amount to be getting on with at this price range. M2 Pro MacBooks have 16GB of RAM at base, and they cost well into the 2000s of dollars. The laptop comes with Intel Iris graphics by default. This is a low-power iGPU which is contained within the Intel processor. Integrated graphics do save power, and they get the job done when it comes to displaying animations within macOS. The more powerful 2.5 and 2.8 variants of the machine have AMD R9 M370X GPUs. These pack a bit more of a punch. If you're going to be playing games, working with 3D design software, or rendering 3D projects for video or game studios, make sure you go with a 2015 Pro with the AMD card. Anyone else, you're more than likely going to be okay with the 2.2GHz variant, which doesn't come with that extra GPU option. The extra graphics performance does come with an increased cost, normally of about $30 to $60. If you pay that extra money, you'll be getting performance roughly in line with the GTX 750. This is not going to compete with modern gaming PCs or modern MacBooks, but does go a damn sight faster than anything integrated into any Intel or MacBooks CPU. It's fine for doing a couple of hours of gaming here and there. Titles such as Fortnite, GTA 5 and Overwatch will run at very reasonable frame rates, but don't expect to get Warzone or Red Dead 2 or something up on there. So is there anything you can modify to improve your 2015 MacBook Pro? Yes, the SSDs inside these are replaceable. In fact, like the 2020 MacBook Airs, storage size starts at 256GB on these models. But unlike the 2020 machines, you can put an SSD of virtually any size inside. If you're a video creator like me, having a terabyte or more is a godsend for long-lasting work computers. God, I hate being limited by my 256GB SSD. One more thing on upgradability, the batteries inside these MacBooks are fairly easily replaced too. Get a new battery for 30 quid or so if your cycle count is over a thousand, and you could really improve the experience the MacBook affords you. So, MacBooks on the Intel side of things do hold some value beyond the scrap heap in 2024. I've heard several reports of Intel machines still being on top for music production. The 2015 is no exception here, and music production, video editing, and of course text and web related tasks are light work for the thing. Thanks for watching, as always. Consider subscribing if you want to watch more, and if you really enjoy my content, my Patreon memberships start at 2 dollars where you can see videos early and get your name included in every one of my outros. Patreon members also get special Discord perks. Don't forget to join that Discord server if you enjoy the sort of things my channel covers.